looking now beyond the specific content, the little details. We've used a lot of scientific model. We've only introduced a little bit of traditional medicine model. We're now going to go into systems of wisdom, how we can really see the connection of life, how this relates to our body. Our systems of wisdom and how we'll outline, we'll go systems of wisdom or knowledge. We already understand how these are different and what the advantages to both of them are. We'll look at what are great systems of wisdom that you can use. We're going to look at the five elements and balance in the world. This is one way to define balance from the Ayurvedic perspective. Traditional Indian medicine, they use these five elements quite a lot. The next one is doshas. This is how they define your individual body type. There's a lot of information on doshas inside your booklet. You'll be able to find an abundance on the web. It's great as your step to see balance as it relates to you as an individual. We're going to see how the doshas relate to diets with purpose and intention. So each diet has a different advantage, a different benefit. So we saw the raw food diet can be great for increasing cold, detoxifying, pulling things out. So it created so much pulling things out that it turned into more loose stool, cold in the spine. It was really pulling everything out. Knowledge or wisdom. So we saw that systems of knowledge, uh, more about the content, specific scientific detail, thousands of categories. Specific systems of wisdom, next one. Systems of wisdom are more about how things unite together. How does everything work as one? And how can we see the connections? So our place within the world. So what are some great systems of wisdom? First off, they're bioqualitative systems. So what that means is, instead of biochemistry, which we're familiar with from modern science, what do the specific molecules do? In this, it's about what do the qualities do? What does cold do? Now, Cold, we can go, oh, it just makes me cold. But what does that do? It makes all of my pores shrink. It decreases the secretions. It makes me go from external heat out there in the world to internal, draw into my home, draw into my mind. Yeah? There's qualities that will take place with mind yeah, and the body that happen for all of these people. So we look at these qualities as a key way to understand this balance, a bioqualitative system. We use these a lot in the West, and I'm sure that you have um, generalizations and terms that you're familiar with from uh, Indonesian terms as well. For if the person is cold, then they may be like, oh, I'm not talking to you. I don't want to interact with the world, yeah? I want to stay here in my thing. If the person is hot, then they're like, they're not just talking to you, but they're telling you what to do. They're out there, I want this to happen and that. You know, these qualities transcend a food yeah, or a weather pattern. There's something that relates to all of life. Hippocrates. So if we looked back into European traditional medicine, Hippocrates was considered as the father of European medicine. He had a humoral system, four different humors, four different main body types that we could understand. It's unfortunate that his system is pretty much lost today. There's tiny bits that are written down, but written knowledge is not as good as knowledge that's been passed on from one being to another. So this system is very much lost. The next one, traditional Chinese medicine, a beautiful system to understand the connection of the world. I really advise for those that have a passion to learn more about it, it's a great system. It's very um, esoteric though. It's great at understanding like the energetic connections, the energy pathways inside our bodies, this alternating yin yang, it's very good at. It can be a bit challenging to combine Chinese medicine with modern scientific language. And as we're all very used to modern scientific language, Ayurveda is really ideal for that. Ayurveda, you can jump back and forth between modern scientific language, bio qualities really easily. Because this system in Ayurveda is a like increases like. Which means if I want to be more grounded and stable, I eat more grounded and stable foods. I spend time with grounded and stable people. It's the same system we use in, in modern science. 
It's actually the same thing, but modern science doesn't have a bioqualitative to that. So because they use the same type of like increases like or opposites balance, therefore they can combine fairly well together. So our chapter one for this, Ayurveda and the five elements. So this is their first step to understand balance in the world. So what is Ayurveda? A lot of you might not know a lot about Ayurveda. So let's really understand what is this science and what is its purpose. The first part of the word Ayur means to preserve life in form. It's how can we preserve us as physical beings. The next part of the word Veda means knowledge or wisdom. It's the knowledge or the wisdom of how to preserve life in form. So if you have a body and you want to lengthen it in form, Ayurveda is amazing for that. Now, India has many incredible sciences to understand our place in the world. All of you will be familiar with yoga. Uh, yoga is more associated as the science of the mind and uniting ourselves with the divine. So although we'll use different terms that may be used within yoga as well, Remember that there's a slightly different purpose. This purpose of yoga is to unite the mind with the divine, self-realization. And we'll see that in chapter three. The purpose of Ayurveda is to preserve the body. Now, in the big picture though, they're all trying to teach us that all life is connected and one. And then in order to preserve the body, we need to realize that we're one. Uh, yoga, in order to preserve the body, we need to unite our mind with the divine and see that we're all one. So it's the science of life that shows us how to understand the world and preserve life in form. It's a vast medical system that covers everything from nutrition, environmental effects to surgery and pharmacy. A lot of people think of it as like, oh, it's just a little bit of doshas and this and that. And what we're teaching you today is like kindergarten Ayurveda. It really goes very deep. So uh, I understand that they were doing organ transplant surgery 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, they knew how to transplant one organ and put another one in. Uh, they knew the herbs to counteract the body's immune response so it wouldn't kill the organ. Amazing stuff a long time ago. A lot of our modern surgery practices come from Ayurveda, cataract surgery. It's something that we learned from ancient Ayurvedic texts amazing system of medicine.